Hey everybody, welcome to Continue Watching. My name is Anton. This is Tyler. Uh, I'm Trey. And today we are watching The Killing of a Sacred Deer. This is a movie released in 2017, currently available to be watched on Netflix, so you will need that Netflix subscription. Uh, get that password from a friend or someone, or just get a free trial, that works too. So, go ahead and watch that. Uh, let's go ahead and jump into things. Trey, what's that? Or No, is this a Tyler's Toys, right? Yeah. Yeah, you, you give us that description. <laughs> a surgeon's carefully curated... Life edges toward disaster when a troubled teenage boy with mysterious motives begins to impose himself on his family. Bravo. Thank you. That was a lyrical masterpiece. Thank you. <sighs> I was Should've really nervous. Faster. I was glad I got to hear that live. Should have read it faster. <laughs> You know, with the title, surprisingly, no deer. <laughs> That's because it's based on the story. <laughs> Goodness. Thought I was going to see like some holy deer with antlers, big antlers or something. <laughs> but Yeah, after after watching that uh, that movie, my, my wife actually looked that up too and found that it was like a historical story, like from like yeah. ancient Greece. Yeah, it was an ancient Greek tragedy play written Killing by of a Sacred Deer. deer? Yeah, yeah, it was called something else, but is it written by Euripides? Killing of a sacred Greek? Um. Essentially, so uh, I don't know exactly who does it, but someone kill, kills a deer in Artemis's fo uh, forest, and Artemis. she sends like some of her minions, I don't know what they're called, like fawns or whatever, uh, and lets the person know that he, he has to kill someone... Uh, from his own family to pay for the deer that was killed. Um, maybe I read. It. I guess I just read a different plot than. Uh... Well, I mean, like I, I don't know how accurate that is. I mean, that's just from what I can remember from what my wife pulled up. Oh, oh. gotcha. Because the one I was reading about was as Agamemnon was going to march on Troy, <laughs> he had done something to piss Artemis off, and so she required he kill his daughter as a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it it was that. So yeah, in Tro uh, at Troy, he killed a deer in Artemis's forest. And yeah, yeah. So just don't. <laughs> just simply do not. Yeah, based on Iphigenia in Aulis. <laughs> Iphigenia. Yeah, Iphigenia. I'm gonna say it. No, I disrespect the the entirety of Greece right now. <laughs> And this director, and Antone, and this director, <laughs> Yorgos Lantimos. Wait, do you not like the movie? No, I loved it. Oh, what did you? What did you think, Antone? Did you like it? Uh, I did not necessarily like it. I didn't hate it though, but uh, I was not a fan. Interesting. Yeah. Trey, what what was one thing you loved about it? Uh, Colin Farrell. Who I'm learning more and more isn't just Bullseye from the crappy Daredevil. Movie. <laughs> I, um, I completely spaced about that role <laughs> until you brought it back up. I mean, after we watched Seven Psychopaths, this movie, The Lobster in Bruges, like the dude can act. Have, we haven't watched <laughs> The Lobster yet. I know, but I and did. we haven't watched In Bruges either. I know, but I did. Uh, I, I, I've well, seen what else Bruges. are you doing with Alice? <laughs> I watch a lot are of shit, you, dude. Are you cheating on the podcast? <laughs> yes. <laughs> You son of a bitch. I haven't seen The Lobster, but I have seen uh, again in Bruges. Lo I the really Lobster's wanna, pretty similar to I this. I want to watch The Lobster. It's the same director, right? Yeah. Um, and you can see it, I, I think, a lot in just kind of the color palette and the way that the shots were done. Yeah. Dude, the shots, the cinematography, way cool. Oh, yeah. I was digging it. A absolutely. <laughs> I think not my, very often we watch. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, you're good. I, I just say that I think the main thing that I didn't like uh, about the show was just the story. Maybe uh, everything else though was great. Um, the what story do you mean to the story? I, I to me it just <laughs> didn't really hook me. Uh, and there's a lot of questions that keep uh, kept coming up, and I just was not uh, okay with them and not explaining anything about. 
Uh, I really wanted to know how he was killing them. If not exactly how, or him to just go like uh, a single sentence, be like, yeah, I learned something in Nam. And I'm like, oh shit, that's how he's doing it. <laughs> but no, it's just, you have to kill someone there or they're going to die. Like, okay, just magically they're going to start dying now. So I was confused <laughs> as well. Um, and so I decided to Google it mm -hmm. and I found a, just two interesting theories that are not confirmed to be true. Because I don't know if there is a true, you know, true way or reason or method, you know, mm -hmm. which I like. I like the fact that it's open to interpretation. Uh, so the first is that he was using a biochemical to cause temporary numbness or uh, loss of use of the legs. Mm -hmm. And then from there, it be it became... Um, psychosomatic. Interesting. That would, uh, would make me really curious about why uh, bleeding from the eyes, though. The bleeding from the eyes is because Bob... So what he did was he put the biochemical on the keychains, which he gave to Kim and Bob, and also in the flowers. Oh. And okay. Bob had to take care of the flowers. So he was he was the only one, according to this theory, that was like had a fatal dose of this because he was around it so much. Right. And that's, I guess that kind of does so explain why, why he was bleeding from the eyes. Yeah. And then why, um, Nicole Kidman's, um, character wasn't really affected. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But yeah, psychosomatic after the initial, because now they thought that it was true, I guess. And there's the, they talk about in the theory, how if they were separated, Kim and Bob, they probably mm -hmm. would have just gotten better. But the fact that they were kept together the entire time just like made it worse. It compounded the issue and made it all the more stronger that they were sick, you know. Mm -hmm. The other theory, which is very interesting, is uh, it's just a different version of our world where um, do do do. do there's things called bargains or deals. So essentially, maybe he like made a deal with a devil or something like that. In sense, no. So let me look through. It's like alchemy, the law of equivalent exchange. Transactions, I think, is what it is. Okay, transaction. He Martin. Mm -hmm. Um. Or let me just rewind further. What's the dad's name? Stephen. Yeah, Stephen. Steven is so there's transactions and justice. So this person says, I think Martin has always been able to get justice from Steven, but at the start of the movie had not chosen to exercise his justice yet. I think it's up to the person who had something or someone taken from them, i.e. the victim to determine when and how to get justice from the taker. I think it, this is why the movie starts with Steven kissing Martin's ass at the beginning. So he is trying to like go through justice because he killed the dad. And so he is treating this kid. Well, he waited on Martin at the diner. He gave him a watch and he didn't get mad when he changed the band to leather. So he's letting, he's letting Martin do all these things where what it doesn't really make sense why he would do that, you know, cause he's just a kid. Um, this person theorizes that the justice that Martin was hoping for was probably that Stephen and his mom would be. Therefore, he just gets a new dad. But that didn't work. So he goes further. Um, and then the transactions is like, anytime someone is trying to get something, they always bring a gift. Like when he went over to pay for the dinner, he bought um, the keychains and then the roses for Anna. And then he didn't have to buy anything for Steven because his like return or gift back to Steven was having him over for dinner. And that's why Steven went is because he kind of had to. And that's why he stayed around for the entire movie almost. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Same with how Anna jerked off that guy. And it didn't seem like she wasn't disgusted by it. That's just what it was. She needed something. And so she did something for it. When Steven talks to his son about the secrets, he tells him his secret 
expecting to get a secret in return, but Bob has no secrets. So it's gifts and transactions, things like that. Interesting. Yeah. I, I honestly don't know which I like more. Yeah. I mean, I don't think that really would change my uh, view on the show or, or the movie. Maybe if they had incorporated like a tiny bit of that and like explained it just a tiny bit. Uh, again, doesn't need to go into detail. Uh, I probably would have liked it a little bit more. Mm-hmm. But the fact that it was just not in there uh, at all would definitely... It has, has brought down the score, uh, for me at least. There's also a theory about hypnosis. Because the farther people are away from Martin, the more emotion they seem to have. But when Martin is very uh, involved, everyone seems to just be emotional. Yeah, that was really strange. <laughs> Especially yeah. when the three of them were just sitting in the in the room. I was just sitting there listening to that and the whole conversation. I was just felt awkward the entire time. <laughs> Which they did a really good job of. <laughs> yeah, they did a super good job of making like the acting was so good. They were very good at just being <sighs> fucking weird. And then I think the the music just made the whole movie just feel like like ominous. The music was really something I really enjoyed a lot. Like I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't comfortable at any point during the movie. <laughs> no, and it's, I didn't realize going into it that it was going to be a psychological uh, horror movie, yeah, or thriller, I guess, whatever you want to call it. I was expecting more. I guess the lobster kind of is too, but that was more like of an uncomfortable, dark comedy. I feel. Uh huh than this was so i was not and the score the whole time i'm with you. Uh, it's like something's happening but i don't know what it is <laughs> i'm too afraid to ask I, I think not being comfortable was the right way to describe it you were just like something bad yeah, something bad's happening i just don't know where or when yeah. or how it was like it was like constantly setting you up for like a jump scare almost but the jump scare never happened <laughs> so i literally almost stopped watching it because i was like all right, it's just like I'm almost getting like physically tired because I'm like tensing up every time I hear music. So I'm like, oh, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? <laughs> and then nothing happens. And so like halfway through, I was like, shit, I might just read this on Wikipedia or watch a few reviews about it. I don't know. But I decided to finish and it was good. Something interesting about uh, Yorgos, the director, is that he also got his start doing like music videos and dance videos for Greek in, with Greek choreographers and TV commercials and stuff like that. It's really interesting, which, actually. A lot of directors have started with music videos. Even Michael Bay started in music videos. Well, I think that I could see that with Michael Bay, you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. explosions and fireworks. This guy and David Fincher are the ones that make me go, oh, really? The guy who did Seven did uh, did music videos? <laughs> The guy who did Killing of a Sacred Deer did stuff for, like, whoever he directed it for. Hmm. Yeah, you, you really are get surprised on, on who directs uh, older music videos. There was a, a little while ago, I was looking at um, a bunch of music videos from the 80s, because if you haven't seen music videos from the 80s, they're all pretty fucking crazy. Um, <laughs> and I was looking at, I'm like, holy shit, like Michael Bay and all of these people. I'm like, holy shit, this is real interesting. So definitely go and look at some 80s music videos. <laughs> True. Pour some sugar on me, baby. Pour some sugar on me. <laughs> but, uh, I, th- I think that I was most surprised that the younger actors were able to to like uh kim and bob were were really well acted that's not something i would have guessed also it was weird that alicia silverstone showed up just to suck on some fingers (laughs) well you know they're beautiful hands that was pretty strange do you think if he would have had sex with his mom that uh this martin dude would have uh not ruined his family i don't Uh, know because i think it it, yeah. I think it depends on which theory you want to go with. Uglier Ezra Miller? Well, I mean, yeah. the only supporting thing I really have is that he didn't say anything about the ki- the kids and family dying until after that scene. So it's a very good possibility. Yeah. I don't know, dude. 
I'd like to. I'd like to hope, but that would ruin his life more than just killing a kid. I think. Well, by making him kill the kid, I'd argue it wouldn't. But all the heart surgeries we saw in the film are real. Do you know that? I figured. Which I, I didn't think it was. Uh, what's his name? Colin Farrell doing it though. Yeah, he, <laughs> the worst stuff. He he said it. He said it. But Colin Farrell said he felt nauseous after reading the script and decided to take it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, good for him. Oh, the that theory about how it's just like a different version of our world is also why no one asks how he's doing it because they huh. understand that it's a form of justice. It's his justice to take. It uh, it probably is the same thing with like the lobster. <gasps> Hmm. Excuse me. Anton the Lobster is about takes place in the future where if you're single, you get sent to a hotel and you have 45 minutes to find an or 45 days, not minutes, 45 days to find a new spouse, or you get turned into an animal and set loose into the woods. Oh, sweet! Can I pick the animal? Yeah, <laughs> sweet. And that that's why it's called the Lobsters because Colin Farrell's character, if he decides he wants to be turned into a lobster, oh, interesting. That's uh. So if he turns into a lobster. Or a dolphin, even. He'd be just sent into the woods. Okay, water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here, lobster, here's this tree to make home in. Well, I didn't... Poor I choice of words. It, so I don't know. <laughs> you haven't that's seen the, really what it is. You haven't seen the lobster? What part of that do you not understand? You told me to watch it. I watched it on your recommendation. Yeah, because I was told it was good. And I know that you like... How do I, how do I put this? artsy snob movies i get that interesting movies <laughs> so oh, no, i th- heard it and i was like wow i think trey would really appreciate this movie i really did it's really good e? this one was really good too i don't need to i don't you don't get high on your own supply dude <laughs> you don't always watch what you recommend fair enough i guess i mean that's like kind of why we ended up choosing uh switching to over to the thing that it's uh person picks their own movie definitely goes out of our comfort zone that's true I'm never comfortable in tone good always stay at the edge of your seat next movie we're watching is rubber <laughs> yeah what about a movie that makes you uncomfortable yeah because it's uncomfortably delightful it's so perfect <laughs> 10 out of 10 it's the next paddington 2 baby so paddington 3 you mean no, oh, yeah, it's like the, the next Paddington, Paddington 2 got like oh, so like Paddington the 4. <laughs> no, yeah, Citizen Kane's no longer the perfect movie on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, I there was a there was yeah, there's like an 80 year old review something. Like yep. That? So Paddington 2 now is the highest rated movie of all time according to Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> have you seen Paddington 2 though? I have not seen one or two. It's they're <laughs> really good. I'll have to give them a shot. It was it was really good. That's the uh, the talking bears, right? Oh, well, he's a talking bear. Yeah, wears a raincoat. I'm surprised Paddington Two is only a seven point eight on eight on IMDb. Then, if it's the highest on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, Rotten Tomatoes has a stupid way their website functions. Yeah, I don't get, understand how that one works. So you get your score out of a hundred based on the percentage of positive reviews versus negative reviews, right? So if there's a 50% on Rotten Tomatoes means that half the critics who saw it, two out of four critics gave it a positive review and two out of four gave it a negative review. So all that 100% does is means that it had no negative reviews. So it could be a B-plus movie, but as long as everyone agrees it's a B-plus movie, it will get 100% on Rotten Tomatoes or a high wow. score. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, It's not like a Metacritic or an IMDb rating where it's an actual badge of merit. That's why Rotten Tomatoes I find frustrating because... I. It's just if people liked it or not, not how good it is. Mm. That makes me curious Google. to go and try. It's and, all about Google uh, users. Yeah, that makes me interesting to want, I'm interested to want to go to go there and look at some movies that are proclaimed as very terrible, but I liked. Like for example, like Tron Legacy. I always everyone always disses on Tron Legacy, but I really liked Tron Legacy, and it has like the one of the worst reviews apparently. That's interesting. Yeah, it'll give you a breakdown of who said what, and you can read individual reviews that give it actual scores. Hmm. Oh, I feel bad he had to kill piss. I feel bad he had to kill Bob. Yeah, that is pretty sad. I I would say that at least he did it in a fair way, <laughs> not like yeah, you're my least favorite child kind of a situation. 
Yeah, but I like this movie. What a total downer. <laughs> There's no good feelings in this, apart from the finger sucking, which, uh, you know, aroused some curious things and some confusing <laughs> things in me. Everything else was just like so sad. I think the most yeah. confusing thing to me was the whole playing dead aspect. General anesthesia? No, the like yes. <laughs> the how the wife just flops down on the bed. Oh. Yeah. Her husband's a pervert. Mhm. Yeah, that's what she said before she did it the first time. <laughs> You're a pervert. And I like no, it. No, she said general <laughs> anesthesia. Oh. As a question. Oh, I yes. I thought you meant like the, when they first got together on their honeymoon or something. You're a pervert. He's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just suck some beautiful hands. Right? Yeah, it was a good movie, though. I I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's a special movie that gets you like, as tense as this one is. Yeah. You know, that last scene when he puts all the things on and he's missing and hitting furniture and stuff like that. That's like that's pretty tense. That's right up there with No Country for Old Men in the hallway scene. I don't know if you guys are familiar with that movie. I, ain't I have not seen it, it yet. No. Oh my gosh. I know what it's about, but I haven't seen it. Yeah, there's it's a, about there, how old people shouldn't be in the country. <laughs> there's a scene where the main character is sitting on a hotel room bed, and the other like the bad dudes after him. And he's walking down the hall, like knocking on doors, and just this whole long scene of him like not breathing, and it's good. It's good stuff. I'll have to watch that. Maybe we'll watch that instead of Cell Block Ninety Nine. I think the the my favorite thing about No Country of Old Men uh, is from years ago. Uh, the Academy Wars was uh, hosted by Mike My- uh, Michael Myers. And they did a uh, Wayne's World sketch, and they <laughs> they're like the top ten porn titles of whatever what year it was, and so they're taking normal movie uh, titles and made them into porn titles. Number two was No Country for Old Men, and they made, changed it to No Country for Old Balls. <laughs> 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 and then number Gross. number one, it was the same year as Iron Man, so it was just Iron Man. <laughs> Iron cock. <laughs> Iron cock and ball torture. Perfect. Yeah, rarely do I watch a movie that gives me that feeling. It was an experience. It's a unique feeling. Yeah. It's. Uh, I don't even know if it's a if it's enjoyable. Do you know? What I, like I liked it, but I don't know if the watching yeah. experience was an enjoyable one. To just feel that uneasiness for two hours. It's a fucking long movie. I didn't, but it didn't feel long. Like it, well, it felt two hours, but it wasn't like two boring hours. Yeah, it was two confusing hours for sure, at least for me. But it was good. I enjoyed it. I I was worried that no one was gonna like it. I I figured you would, Trey, but I didn't. I didn't think Anton would. As soon as I started watching it, because I had no idea what it was about. I mean, it was it was very close to something that I would say, again, that I like. Because they did do a lot of great things in general with the, with the movie. But it was just barely under uh, undercooked, I guess you can say, in my eyes. Well, speaking of cooking, what would you rate the movie? Uh, I'd give it a six. Interesting. I uh, I think I'd give it a nine. Oh, I really enjoyed this one. I think I'll give it an eight. Well, I think I'm gonna give it a nine because the cinematography was really good, like the angles and the way they followed characters and the way they framed scenes. I really enjoyed. Like, I think one of my favorite scenes was. I think it was Martin and Steve talking with Kim in the background or like next to them, but it was just focused on Kim who was in the middle and the other two were out of focus. So we were just seeing her reaction to just watching them and looking at them while they talk. I thought it was really cool. I'm glad that you liked it too. I went, I went in assuming you'd watch the lobster. No <laughs> again. So you're like, so I was like, Tyler's like pick this movie. Cause he, probably already knows that he loves it 
I picked it because I thought it was, I heard it was good. I heard that you either love this movie or you hate the movie. And I had no idea. I thought it was going to be more like, like logical drama, if that makes sense. Like something that made sense. Probably. Yeah. I get what you're saying that you, it wouldn't have been magic, witch powers. Yeah. It would have been more, I don't know what I imagine in Bruges where like, it makes sense what's happening. Oh yeah. But I, I was, <laughs> I was very much cut off guard from like the first five minutes. <laughs> I mean, that's really the only reason why I'm not giving it a seven is because the whole, you don't really know how, I mean, hell, I would even freaking accept a hint like when he was tied up and like, how are you doing it? And him just going, wouldn't you like to know? I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, all right. I mean, Water at least boy. there, at least like someone knows what the fuck is going on. <laughs> hey, how are you doing this? Would you like to know, Surgeon Boy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because that would mean really it would play off of the frustration that he has. I mean, because the whole time that this is happening to his kids, I mean, he doesn't want to admit that something else is happening. Because takes him to uh-huh. this, the the doctors. Everyone does their tests. Like. That, to me, is, like, the logical choice of any father. Like, if someone comes up to you like that, um, you you don't want to give in to their demands until you absolutely have to, and is which is perfectly great, uh, up and, and then all the way to, to the ending where he um, had no other choice. Fantastically thought out and planned, but... So, before I start talking about logic, I do want to just mention, I did bitch about someone's logic in our last episode (laughs) um i think this is completely different because in shield hero he is at times logical and it's like normal logic in this not many things are normal so i see what you're saying but at the same time i would say you would need to recognize that this isn't a typical person just based on I would say how he talks and how his family acts. It's not, I people don't act like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I guess you can kind of say. I mean, I just understand what he like the why he's doing it the way he's doing it. I guess you can say. Yeah, I don't know. I think I think to gain an understanding, you have to just pick a theory, which I I like movies that do that because you don't see it every day, and it's more like. It's almost like a choose your own ending or choose your own adventure or you, you just, you get to decide what makes sense to you for this movie to work. (laughs) And that's just something I guess I just don't really care too much about. Like, and it kind of goes back to the, the, our Donnie Darko episode. It's just like you get all of those, uh, the theories and stuff, but when it comes down to it, like, I just want to know from the beginning of the movie, the end of the movie. I don't want to go home and have to do uh, write a thesis on <laughs> what the fuck this movie's about to try to figure out what the hell's going on. Like the movie started, now it's over. Let's move on. <laughs> okay, so now this is what I this is what you have to do. You have no other choice. <laughs> Read the theories and then watch the movie after you pick a theory you like. Uh, you'll like it more <laughs> by doing that. Are there spark notes? How about that? On theories. <laughs> the theory wasn't that long. Like, if you just Google... I think I Googled, how did Martin kill the family? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and the first link was Reddit, and it's like, hey, this is my theory. <laughs> I, I like Maybe, this may- the movie that you could make those kind of guesses and, and add more to it. I, I like that it's unanswered. Maybe it was all a dream, and, and it's because he drank himself into another world. Maybe Bob never existed. This was an isekai all along. <laughs> I'd rather be a vending machine. <sighs> well, what's uh, what's the next thing we're going to watch? Yeah. Next, we are going to watch Young Justice. Young Justice is available on HBO Max or DC Universe. If you have any of those subscriptions, you can go ahead and watch that. This is season one. And there are a lot of episodes in season one, but we're going to go ahead and watch it all in one go. We're not going to split it up like we have been uh, for other series that do uh, have 
a larger amount of episodes. So go ahead and watch the entire season of Young Justice, uh, again, available on HBO or DC Universe Online. Uh, also, don't forget to go ahead and follow us on all of our social medias, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, and all of that. You can find links to those at anchor.fm slash continue watching. We would like to hear from you, see what you suggest. Uh, if you uh, agree with our situ- uh, assessments of movies and shows, we'd like to hear from you. So go ahead and tweet at us and let us know what we're, how we're doing. Of uh, course we'll... you're going to agree with us. Because <laughs> we're always right. Never wrong. <laughs> Correct. Unless you're Tyler. <laughs> unless you're Tyler. No. Unless you're Anton and Trey and it's Indiana Jones. <laughs> I and think you're, you're still wrong. bitter about that, actually. Bitter? No. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing Nothing no. about being right makes me bitter. <laughs> <laughs> that rem- <laughs> oh my, that statement really reminds me of um, the Netflix anime's... Uh, God, what the, I'm drawing a blank of it now. With Escanor? You know what? Uh, Seven Deadly Sins? That's Deadly the one. Sins. The How the, the one... Um, person's power was that if you uh, go to uh if you hate the person you're not allowed to move and escanor goes how can i hate someone who's weaker than me <laughs> yeah my boy <laughs> yeah i miss canor <laughs> all right be big all time huh <laughs> try that be big at night Have you guys ever seen moonrise kingdom no i don't think so or i haven't heard fantastic of mr fox I've seen that it's a Wes one. Anderson film. Hmm. We'll have to start Mr. watching that kind of stuff then. I've heard about Fantastic Mr. Fox. It was Jordan Belew's favorite movie ever. I would say like the the comedy of Fantastic Mr. Fox is kind of in line with, um, uh, like the Men Who Stare Out Goats and uh, Oh Brother Where Art Thou. It's just straightforward. Like you get the whole situation, and they just kind of. Get uh, pluck things into it that uh, make it comedy. Yeah. Okay, yes, bye. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to watch Fantastic Mr. Fox. I'm not gonna Good, be <laughs> suggesting it anytime soon. The fact that it was Jordan's favorite movie at a time makes me not want to watch it. Why? Because I think he's a goober. Oh yeah, but he's a sweet kid. All right. Uh, well. Oh, uh, indeed. Well, thanks for listening in, everybody, and hope you have a great time. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.